Teji share back with another video on easy math. Okay, today is Thursday, so we are going to release a video on sequences and series. Okay, we completed approximately half of this chapter. Okay, now let's see the last part of this channel. Those are special series. Okay, before starting special series, let's discuss about relation between AM, GM, and HM means arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean. Okay, first let's go to them. Arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean. What will be the relation between them? First, let's start by their formula. Okay, first we know that arithmetic mean is nothing but a plus b by 2. If a and b are two terms and geometric mean is square root of ab, harmonic mean is 2ab by a plus b or 2 by 1 by a plus 1 by b. Okay, now how can we change this? How can we prove the relation between them by this? By these basic formulae. Let's see them. Okay, here harmonic progression is 2ab by a plus b. What can you observe in this? Okay, arithmetic mean is a plus b by 2, but in harmonic mean we have 2 by a plus b term, right? 2 by a plus b. And ab, what is that ab? It is nothing but square of the geometric mean, right? You can visualize that easily. Okay, now let's visualize that and let's prove that. Okay, harmonic mean 2ab by a plus b. You can change that as ab by a plus b by 2. Okay, this is fraction with 3 divisions. 1 in the numerator goes to the third part of the division. Okay, a plus b by 2, you can replace that with am or arithmetic mean. And ab, how can we write ab? It is square root of ab by whole square square root of a b whole square then square root of a b means that is a geometric mean so h m is equal to g m whole square by a m if we send a m to the other side it becomes a m into h m is equal to g m whole square so what will be the g m square goes to the other side it becomes square root of a m into h m okay how can we get the formula from this Okay, here geometric mean is square root of arithmetic mean and harmonic mean. In another words, what can we tell this in another words? In another words, we can tell that if there are two terms, those are arithmetic and harmonic mean of other two terms. If there are two terms A and B, their arithmetic mean is AM and harmonic mean is HM. And the geometric mean of those arithmetic mean and harmonic mean is a geometric mean. In that means that AM, GM and HM or in GP, right? This is the relation between arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean or in GP. Okay, now let's go to special series. Directly to special series. Okay, special series are somewhat special and somewhat complicated to understand. I will explain them. Okay, special series. There are four types of special series. Okay, there may be more. You can invent them or you can discover them. There is, they are nothing different to discover. Okay, you have observed arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean and those progressions and those sum of n terms. Okay, now let's discuss special series. Okay, after discussing arithmetic progression and geometric progression you may have get a small doubt what if we combine them what if we combine arithmetic and geometric progressions what will we get which type of progression will we get how can we derive that progression how can we find some of those progression this may be the common doubt right what if we Multiply arithmetic mean with a common ratio. Or what if we add common difference to the geometric mean? Okay, adding common difference to the geometric mean. 
that is somewhat easy one you may call that GAP or something you may keep a new name or something but arithmetic geometric progression means multiplying with common ratio multiplying a AP with common ratio that is called as AGP okay you can understand that easily you can find the nth term any terms sum of n terms it is easy sorry but sum of n terms of an AGP is somewhat difficult to understand I'll explain that and I'll explain that with a proof okay now our second special series what is that okay if you have learned about some of formula for some of first and natural numbers squares of first and natural numbers cubes of first and natural numbers you may have think that are they series are they sequences are they part of the progressions how can how can we find the sum of them how can we derive the formula for some of them as yes, those are also a series they come under the category of special series we will discuss about that in next video and the third one is difference of terms in a series or difference of series terms or in AP okay you may have get this doubt for example if we take the progression 1 4 9 16 25 okay you may have observed those are nothing but squares of natural numbers okay what will be the day what will be their differences okay differences how it will be means second term minus first term that is only how to find common difference right 4 minus 1 it is 3 and then 9 minus 4 5 16 minus 9 7 25 minus 16 9 if you have observed them carefully and if you take 0 term 2 1 minus 0 it is 1 means it is 1 3 5 7 9 and so on means it is odd numbers or it is an AP search forms will come in that category difference of series terms or in AP okay then what if there are two progressions or if there is a progression like 1 4 7 10 means a progression a arithmetic progression with a difference 3 with a common difference 3 then what if we multiply them means like 1 into 4 plus 4 into 7 plus 7 into 10 means it is starting from 1 and it is continuing with common ratio 3 and if we take that from second term onwards then second term becomes first, third term becomes second, fourth term becomes third. And multiplying those terms means in normal progression, it will be first term. Multiplying that with the first term in the progression which we took from the second term. Such terms, it will come under the category of product of progression terms. Further, there is a separate method to calculate the sum of n terms that is called as VN method. Okay, you will discuss about that later. In this video, first let's discuss about arithmetic geometric progression, their sum of n terms, how to prove them, how to prove sum of infinity terms and complete guide on that or complete or let's run that completely. Okay, now let's start by general term and formula for sums. <music> Okay, let us start by an example of AGP. Okay, before I also said that we can take like GAP. Okay, you can also take that, but its sum of n terms will be easily. Okay, first let's discuss about AGP. Uh, and you may imagine about general terms, sum of n terms, sum of infinity terms of a GAP on your own. And the other thing, sum of infinity terms of a GAP may be not possible. Okay, you should try that as a exercise. Now, let's discuss about AGP. Okay, what is the general term? First, let's start by an example. 1, 4, 12, 32, 80, 192. That is an example of AGP. Okay, in that AGP, how can you visualize that? 
how can we visualize that okay you can visualize that somewhat easily how 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 can we visualize that 1 4 12 okay if we divide the if we divide the terms means first term no need to divide that second term divide with 2 third term divide with 4 fourth term divide with 8 and fifth term divide with 16 and sixth term divide with 32 means dividing by 2 po powers powers of 2 exponents of 2 then you will get 1 4 divided by 2 2 12 divided by 4 3 32 divided by 8 4 80 divided by 16 5 192 divided by 32 which is nothing but 6 means 1 2 3 4 5 6 that is nothing but an AP they are nothing but natural numbers natural numbers are also AP with difference 1 and we divide it with powers of 2 means common ratio is 2 okay from that you can tell general term easily first term will be a second term will be a plus d into r third term a plus 2d into r square Th fourth term a plus 3d into r cube so nth term will be a plus n minus 1d which is general term of an ap into r power n minus 1 means multiplying that with a common ratio that is the general term of an arithmetic geometric progression or agp what will be the sum of n terms Okay, sum of n terms and infinity terms is somewhat critical to remember, but they are somewhat easy to derive. But it is critical to remember because it is a big formula. Those are big formula. They will not ask them somewhat frequently, but let's learn them. We should learn anything, right? Okay, sum of n terms. The formula for sum of n terms is a minus a plus n minus 1 d into r power n by 1 minus r. A plus n minus 1 d that is general term of an AP. A minus general term of AP into r power n by 1 minus r. You can remember that term like that. And the second term dr into 1 minus r power m by 1 minus r whole square. This is somewhat difficult to remember. And sum of infinity terms. It will be somewhat easy to remember. A by 1 minus r plus dr by 1 minus r square a by 1 minus r means sum of infinite terms in a gp right plus dr by 1 minus r the whole square dr by 1 minus r whole square this is somewhat difficult to remember okay now let's see how to derive them in a easy way or in a ordinary way or normal way there is no other way. This is the only way. Okay, there may be another way. That is based on how they think and how they derive that. Okay, now let's see. Okay, guys, as you can see, this is how to derive that. This is based on the example or the Proof how we derived sum of n terms in a GP. We multiplied that with a number r, right? Similarly, here also we will multiply a arithmetic geometric progression, the sum of n terms of arithmetic geometric progression with a variable r or with a common ratio r. And then we will subtract them to get the answer on how to derive that. Okay, let's see that. Now, if I multiply that with r, you will get a r plus a plus d r square plus and so on. Okay. But in this case, let's take the first term as 0. Why taking 0? Because here you will get first term with first term with common ratio r, second term r square, and nth term you will get n. You should equal them with the terms of a normal AGP. To get common and for subtracting easily. So let's take 0 first. 0 plus a r plus a plus d r square plus and so on until a plus n minus 2 d into r power n minus 1. 
we coincide the r power n minus 1 terms, right? Plus a plus n minus 1 d into r power n. Okay, now if we subtract them, what will we get if we subtract them? S n into 1 minus r is equal to a minus 0, a. And here in all terms, there is a. You can cancel them out because you are subtracting and you can take the r terms common. So you can directly cancel them. And here d and here there is no d. Means you will get directly dr plus here 2d minus d which is d. r square will come. dr square plus and so on until dr power n minus 1 and the last term is same plus it will get the minus sign minus a plus n minus 1 into d into r power n. Minus a plus minus of minus of a plus n minus 1 d into r power n means it will get a minus sign. Okay, next you will get s into 1 minus r is equal to and here a, let's write first and last terms first. a plus a plus n minus 1 into d r power n plus in those all remaining terms let's take d common. Okay, there is no need to take common. You can take the directly but let's take d common in our case. Then you will get r plus r square plus and so on until plus r power n minus 1. Okay. What can you observe in this? What is the common thing in this? Okay. Here first term is r. And from second term onwards it is multiplied with a constant term r. r. r square r cube r power 4 r power 5 and so on until r power n minus 1. Here r power n minus 1 that is which term? How to find which term is it? Okay, if we take R common from that, why taking R common or why taking R as a, as a factor? Because first term is R, right? So if you take R from that, you will get R into R power n minus 2. R power n minus 2 means that is n minus 1 the term. Means there are total of n minus 1 terms in that geometric progression. Then what will be the sum R into r power n minus 1, 1 minus r power n minus 1. Okay, you can take r power n minus 1 normally. Here we are taking 1 minus r power n. But here, n means total terms, but here we have n minus 1 terms. So, we should take power as n minus 1 by 1 minus r. Okay, you may ask me that, why you have to, you can use two formulas in GP, a into r power n minus 1 by r minus 1 or 1 minus r power n by 1 minus r. In this case, why we took 1 minus? Because here, if you observe, you will get Sn into 1 minus R. Sn into 1 minus R. So, we take 1 minus R. That is your wish. We can take anything. But if we take R minus R, it will be somewhat confusing and somewhat tough to solve that. So, let's take 1 minus R. Then, we will get the formula. Sn is equal to A minus A plus N minus 1 day into R power N by 1 minus R plus dr into 1 minus r power n minus 1 by 1 minus r whole square. Okay, this is somewhat big formula. Okay, if you want, take a screenshot of this, learn this, but don't buy at this. Just understand this. Don't, just understand this. You should remember this forever. You should use this technique or you should use this solve in any other form formula or in any other form in any other form formulas or problems okay now let's see some of infinite terms how can we derive them how can we derive them easily how easy it will be to derive them okay let's see to find s infinity first thing that should come to our mind is that modulus of r should be less than 1. Okay, it is not less than or equal to. It should be less than 1. Why is that? Why is that? Okay, if it is greater than 1, let us take in our example 1.5 or let us take 2, then what will be the infinite term? R is 2 means you will get 2 power infinity. What is 2 power infinity? That is 
that is very very big number so we will take that as infinity so we can't solve that so we should take mod less or less than 1 okay you may ask what will happen if mod less of r is less than 1 it will also approach to infinity but no it's not it will not approach infinity why is that because if r is less than 1 let's say 0 0.9 what is 0 0.9 whole square 0 0.81 0 0.9 whole cube 0 0.729 0 0.729 you may have you may be continuing that and it will up it is approaching zero as you can observe that it is approaching zero so r power infinity will be zero means large term will be zero it will be decreasing to zero so it will be easy to understand that it will not be any big number it will just be a small number okay you may ask why how it will be a small number okay if we take 2 in our 2 in our case if we take 0 0.5 in our case then what will happen to 0 0.5 if we do whole square it becomes 0 0.25 0 0.125 0. 0. 0.0625 and it will be decreasing right if you add them 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 0 0.75 0 0.825 it will be approaching 1 so we are getting an finite value so we should take mod less or less than or equal to 1 means r power infinity will be 0 so s infinity will be in s infinity n is equal to infinity right so r power infinity is equal to r power n which is nothing but 0 so in previous formula if i substitute r power n is 0 this whole term becomes 0 and here r power infinity means r power n is infinity r power n minus 1 is also infinity means r power n minus 1 means r power infinity will also be 0 so you'll get dr into 1 so this whole term will also becomes 1 so you can get that formula easily it will become s infinity is equal to a by 1 minus r plus dr by 1 minus r the whole square Okay, this is how to derive sum of infinity terms in a AGP. Okay, guys, this is for today's video. If you like the video, like hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, ring that bell icon, hit notification when release a new video. If you have any doubts, comment on below. I'll answer them in the next video. Okay, in next video on sequences or and series, or in our next Thursday video, we will discuss about special series which indicates the sum of first n terms or squares of n terms or cubes of n terms or the exponents of n terms as a sequence and series and we will derive them okay bye see you later